ladies and g-strings why won't my guitar stay in tune uh, well uh, the amount of times I've heard I'm never buying a Gibson again Gibsons do not stay in tune I'm never buying another Fender Fenders never stay in tune PRS's will not stay in tune yeah well they will uh, to a degree although nothing really does because it's made of stuff that moves with atmospheric conditions and what have you but the main reason that your guitar won't stay in tune is because you're not bending your strings in let me show you what i mean with a little restring how do you mean there's more to it than that ah uh, well yes perhaps there is a little more to it than that but that will be your number one problem and the best way that i can show you how this works and what I do to eliminate that particular difficulty is uh, I'm going to restring this guitar. I'm not going to do it in front of you because that's boring. You've seen me restring a guitar before, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, I'm going to give this a bit of a clean up because it, it's all set up basically. Just wants a bit of a bit of spit and polish and a new set of Harley Benton 9s. These are great strings, I love them. I buy them in. Well, I buy them in quantity. So, I'll get this strung up and then we'll see what the best thing is to do. Here we go. So, that's the strings on and now I'll show you what I do and I'll tell you what the received knowledge is for string bending, which I don't totally agree with. So, we've got a fresh new set of 9042s on here and... Um, so, I've got my tuner plugged in here, which hopefully you'll be able to see. If I tilt that slightly. Uh, so, we'll start off, obviously, with the... Uh, well, not obviously, but... With the bottom eight. Now... I brought to show you the two basic types of guitar, which is a Les Paul and a Strat. Um, and there's a good reason for this. What you'll find, and especially with a Strat type, but really with all guitars, uh, is that you need to tune them twice, or three times, or four times even. Because as you adjust the tension on the strings, this will cause the neck to bow slightly. And that is what we want, certainly. Uh, so you normally need to go two or three times, and especially something that's got a vibrato system, which everybody calls tremolo because of Leo blinking Fender. Genius that the man was. I think we'll do vibrato systems another day. He called his system the synchronous system. And that's because, as far as I'm aware, the main system that was employed before his vibrato system came into existence was the Bigsby. Came out a couple of years before. And so Leo, called his system the synchronous system. And the reason for that was a bit all synchronized tremolo. Uh, that means, synchronous just means that everything's happening at the same time. So, uh, whereas with a Bigsby, you bend the bit that the strings are attached to, the bridge remains static, but with a strat type vibrato system, the uh, bit that holds the strings and the bridge saddles all move at the same time. So it's that all at the same time element that uh, gave us synchronous. And of course, he incorrectly described it as a tremolo system, or, uh, or certainly he called this thing a tremolo arm.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, this, so you know, you're singing this as snap. Hmm. Now we'll go through. I know that that's not perfectly in pitch, but uh, we'll now go through them all again, and they should have dropped in pitch a little. And there we go. A B C D. So now that's showing. Oh. Yeah, that's now showing D sharp, isn't it? Yeah, now we come up to E. And that's dropped by at least half a tone. That's dropped as well. Only a little. Now, in terms of string stretching, the unwound strings will not bend or stretch quite as much as the wound strings. Okay, so that's twice through. Let's just check it again. Yeah, a little bit flat. I'm not a fan, I'll tell you, I'm not a fan of clip-on tuners. For two reasons. Reason number one is then they're, they're not they're not as accurate as you might they're, they're good, they are good. But they're not as accurate as something like this. Of course the brilliant thing with them is is that you don't have to muck about, you you can just see it instantly. The other reason I don't like them is because they usually leave if you don't take them off as soon as you finish tuning, they usually leave a horrible stain on your headstock. Yeah, a little bit flat. So this is the third pass. Okay. So so a few things have happened here. So we've increased the tension on the strings, which increase the, increases the tension on the neck, which also creates that um, the curvature that we want. Uh, and also, of course, we put some strain on the springs at the back of the vibrato system. As I say, we'll, we'll cover that as a separate topic because the, the, because there's an awful lot going on. So, here we go. The received knowledge is that what you do is you give it a quick tug. So, let's see what happens with this. So, so you'll E... Oh, let's get that back up to pitch. There we go. Okay. So... What everybody says is is that you should either just pull it like that, and I can and I could hear it tightening up on the peg head here. So let's have you just a tad over here, so you can see that. Yeah, actually, if I bring that back a little bit, that's probably better. So that will now be woefully out. Oh yes. And there's nothing wrong with giving it a quick tug, and that's normally where I start. The other uh, method that people like to use is hold their thumb here, and you know, and 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 pull it like this, so that you're not pulling against the machine head, and we're a mile out again. And I always do this to start with, but that is not how I finish, which I'll show you. Right, I'll carry on pulling these without talking, so I can whip through it quickly. Yeah, that's in tune. So let's give it a pull, give it a little stretch. All the different ways that they like to do it. G strings always out, aren't they?
Now I should say that, because I know that Michael and Wood will be telling me about this, is that really all setups should be done in a plane position. Like this, you see. Otherwise you won't. Well, oh, that's not bad. But what I do then, after I've done the quick tug, is then I then I bend them as though I'm playing them. And I bend them a mile further than you should. And that has made a big difference. If you can see that needle, can you see the can you see the needle? Oh. I want to make sure you can see this. Hmm. Until it's flat. That sounds right. right nearly. Should beep at me when we're done. So, just to prove my boring anorak point, um, after you've done that tugging, which everybody likes to do, uh, then you really need to bend it as though you're playing it, as though you're playing it like you hate it. I'll do the same with the B string, and that's probably fallen by a mile, it has. Bit sharp there, so give it another bend, and another bend. Yeah, there we go. So that was sharp, but I bent it back into tune. Right, so. You that's enough of that. So, and that will be the main reason why your guitar keeps going out of tune. It's because the strings aren't bent in. And that is not the only thing. So I'm gonna quickly whip through the other nine that I've come up with, because I, I like a top 10 of anything. And, uh, but certainly, even if you don't bend or play like the solos or shredding, ripping things, always do that bending. Always do the, once you put new strings on, and that's another point, once you put new strings on, bend them in as much as you can, and that will increase your tuning stability, and it is the number one reason that your guitar goes out of tune. Let's have a quick whip through the other nine. And then number 10, your vibrato system. If you've got a guitar equipped with a vibrato system, and you're using it, then what it does, of course, is it slackens and then tensions back the strings. So it changes all the dynamics of the raw materials that's going on. It'll make it unless again, as I say, you've given it plenty, plenty of bending on the strings, plenty of action on here. I will cover the Brasso systems in a different uh, in a different video because there's an awful lot going on, and it's all down to points of contact. But the vibrato system again, make sure you give them this plenty of bending and the strings plenty of bending. Always oh, comes out those strings, and let's not forget, let's not forget those points of contact. Hmm. Hmm, so this one probably isn't so much of a uh, why not it stay in tune, more of a, in fact the next two, um, why does it sound out of tune, it will be the more appropriate question. Uh, yeah, old strings, old strings, <sighs> and this is a tough one really, old strings generally speaking won't perform, you can have a guitar that sounds woefully out of tune, Bob a fresh new set of strings on it and it will transform it, providing you're doing the bending in. Brian Setzer very famously said to his personal um, guitar technician, never change the strings unless they really need it. So, uh, you know, I mean, he's a superstar and, and an absolutely amazing musician and he really knows what he's talking about. 
So, you know, perhaps there's a little something in that. But certainly, if it sounds horrible, put new strings on. Takes five minutes. Yeah, so, intonation. What's intonation? Intonation is uh, all about string length. So your string is, generally speaking, suspended between the nuts and the bridge saddle. And the exact halfway point should be at your 12th fret. And if you don't have a decent tuner, like the one that you saw just before, that, uh, there it is. If you don't have a, you know, a decent tuner like this, and it's not really, like I say, not really a deal breaker. Those, the click on things are fine, they're just not quite as fine. Uh, but a very easy way to check is, and you'll have heard people doing this, and as a teenager, I never understood why, but I can tell you, is them playing the harmonic and then the notes at the 12th fret. And the reason is, is because the harmonic is the same pitch as playing at the 12th fret. So if those two notes sound the same, then your intonation is probably okay. And it is, oh, that's a little flat. Not by a mile, but a little. So, what will happen is, is if you sound in tune here, you may not sound in tune here. Yeah, that is just a little flat. Anyway, so, intonation. Yes. Right. Seven. There is a perfectly sane and sensible reason why we want our action to, the, to within a particular tolerance. And basically, that's because if your string height is a mile high, unless you're just playing, you're only playing slide guitar, in which case it makes no difference, then what you're actually doing is you're, you're changing, <laughs> you're being tuned between the nut and the saddle, but if your string height is a mile high, then what you're doing is you're changing the distance between the two points, between the fretted notes and the saddle. So, get your string height roughly okay. Mm. In at number something. Uh, yeah, so get all your basic setups right and on your bench or your sofa or your dining table or wherever it is you're doing it. Uh, but for your final, final, final fine tuning adjustments, have your guitar in the playing position. So for, you know, because the way that you, because this is how you play a guitar, generally speaking, and so this is the position that you want it in when you're doing those final adjustments, that final setup. Because uh, when you got it lying down, whether you've got, whether you've got two sponges, or a little wherever it is, or if you're using one of these, and I mean, it makes no difference really. But this is the natural position that guitar will be in. So do your final setup with it in this position. Hmm. Then at number five, tune up, not down. So if I've got one string that's a little high. Okay. Go below where you want to be. And then tune up. This keeps an even tension on the string. But more importantly, there's gears inside here. Normally it's a cog and what they call a worm drive. And there's always a little bit of room in there. A little bit of lash that can be created. So when you tune up, you're keeping those gears tightly bonded together. Tune up, not down. Yeah, well, this is normally, yes, uh, grip. So grip, you see. So, especially when you're new and you're trying so hard to get those, sh to make your fingers go into those shapes that are unnatural in the normal world, so you might just be overcompensating and and it sounds so
this is just something that comes with time. It will take time for your fingers to learn the shapes that you want them to go into. It'll come, just keep practicing. Yeah, so if you've got a long time, if you've done all the other stuff, if your intonation's right and you've bent your strings in, but the thing keeps going out of tune religiously, usually uh, it will be your, in my experience, I mean, I've only been doing this for, you know, 40 odd years, but in my experience, certainly, uh, the biggest, most common problem with a guitar that consistently goes out of tune is the nut slot. Theoretically, a hard tail strap should stay in tune more efficiently and uh, consistently than any other type of guitar. Uh, because the strings have a uniform direction of travel and providing the slots are cut correctly and in the correct orientation, uh, then you should be fine. Um, plastic isn't... The, plastic, actually, plastic is fine. Plastic is fine. Uh, bone is better. Uh, then there's those, there's the graphite ones and what have you. Oh, and by the way, you may have... Uh, uh, you'll have been told, won't you? You see? You've got a problem with your notes. Get a pencil and uh, pencil in between your nut slots. And that is a perfectly valid thing to do because pencil, uh, uh, pencils are graphite and graphite is a very uh, slippery material. Uh, I, my choice is bone because you don't need to do anything to it, it just works. Then you've got Big Ben's nut sauce, uh, which is terrific, but Anything that's oily at all does run the risk of contamination. And so it's something that you probably have to do fairly regularly because it can pick up fluff and dust and other stuff like that. Uh, let me show you something else. So on your other type of guitar, let me put this one down. So on the other type of guitar, the thing that we've got going on here, of course, is that, uh, as you can see, the strings go, don't go straight up like they do on a Strat. They go off in little angles here. That, I mean, this doesn't have a wider headstock as, uh, as many Gibsons do, so probably that uh, specific problem is eliminated somewhat. But what you will find, or certainly what you should find... Can you see this? Uh, yeah. So what you should find is that the nut slots are cut uh, r roughly in the direction of where the peg head is. So they're not going to run straight up and down like they do on the Strat. They're going to, especially the D, the D and the G, which are at the greatest angle away from the nuts, they should be cut just slightly in these directions. Nuts. Yeah, number two. Slightly disappointing news, I'm afraid. But it's the truth. It will never, ever be perfect. And there's a few good reasons for this. Uh, the first reason is, is that we're using materials that bend and stretch and change with atmospheric conditions and with the, just the way that you hold the thing. Wood moves, metal moves, points of contact become sticky and so it will so if you're looking for absolute perfection there's no, another reason why we can't have perfection with the western chromatic scale but that's an argument best left between pythagoras and guido de rezzo uh, but it will never be perfect so don't let it drive you mad just you know accept that you will get the closest to a nice sounding instrument that you can, but it will never be perfect. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, really, down to, uh, down to number, I know I've left number two up there, but uh, really down to number one, the most common and main difficulty that you will have with your guitar either not sounding right or keep going out of tune, is down to that bending. So but even if you bought a brand new guitar, it won't be bent in. Uh, the strings will not be bent in. You must do much, much bending. And actually, the best way 
to do your bending is playing the damn thing and really giving it uh, giving it hell. Uh, but of course, strings are always suspended between two points, and anywhere where the string touches will always be an area of concern. I mean, for example, when I was talking about nuts before, and nut slots more specifically, if, for example, you've gone up a gauge of string than the original manufacturer's specification, then you might find that your nut slots aren't wide enough, and that's causing your string to grab inside that nut slot. So that is always something worth bearing in mind. Uh, actually, not only will it uh, potentially grab in the nut, but also you'll have to make other adjustments because it will create extra tension on the neck, which will create a greater bow, and that will possibly make your action higher and change all sorts of different aspects of your guitar. So that's it from me. Thanks all ever so much for watching. Bend your strings. Adios, amigos. Ta-ra. Oh, before I go, uh, a quick shout out to uh, Graham, Cussie 180, uh, for the information about uh, John Smith and Gordon Whittam. Apparently the Smiths bought out Whittam, I think it was 1985, but I can't remember just exactly. But certainly they bought him out. Uh, and uh, the other one is, uh, I'm sorry Steve, I've already done the Christmas one, uh, but uh, happy birthday for Christmas Day. And Michael, thank you for that, uh, you know, over or through um, little brain teaser. I've taken that on board and it is something that I will be looking at in greater detail. So, adios amigos, ta -ra.